So today I want to go over one of the strongest builds in season one of Diablo 4, which is a tornado build for the Druid. And this is going to be a level 100 build with all renown completed. So it's going to be at the very high end of builds. And you're only going to need one unique for this build, which is the Tempest Roar. Storm skills have up to a 25% chance to grant for spirit, and your base storm skills are now also werewolf skills. This is primarily to allow us to use all of our skills while and Grizzly Rage, and we'll add a ton of additional scaling. And then next up, we have our skill tree, starting with our generator. I'm using Wind Shear. I like this over Stormstrike because it's a range generator. It's generally just much easier to use. If you're doing higher tier content, Stormstrike is still a viable option because it gives that damage reduction. Then upgrade one has a chance to cause enemies to become vulnerable. Then we're going down, putting five points into Tornado, our main damaging ability. Upgrade one has a chance to spawn additional Tornadoes. Upgrade two Tornadoes can now cause enemies to become vulnerable. Then we're going down getting our defensives. Cyclone armor which gives you non-physical damage reduction. Then we activate it and knocks enemies back. Upgrade one causes those knockback enemies to become slowed. Upgrade two this gives us a damage reduction every 10 seconds. Then we're taking blood howl which is just a big heal. Upgrade one reduces the cooldown on kills by one second. Upgrade two gives us 15% increased attack speed. And with how quickly we're killing enemies this will be up a majority of the time and we want this attack speed up as much as possible. And then we're going down putting one point in the hurricane upgrade one slows enemies upgrade two causes enemies to deal less damage hurricane can deal some decent aoe damage but it's primarily to proc additional effects then we're going down taking grizzly rage one of the most important parts of the build upgrade one causes you to be unstoppable for six seconds upgrade two causes you to fortify every second it's active then for our capstone i'm currently using bestial rampage which after being in werewolf for 2.5 seconds gained 25 percent increased attack speed for 15 seconds this will be up basically a 100% of the time, so this is just a 25% increased attack speed at all times. Next up, we have our passives, starting with Heart of the Wild to get three into Wild Impulses. Your course goes cost more, but deal more damage. Three into Predatory Instinct for Critical Strike Chance to close enemies, then three into Increased Movement Speed while in Werewolf. One into Ancestral Fortitude to get three into Vigilance, damage reduction after using a defensive skill, and we'll be spamming Blood House, so this will be up quite a lot of the time. Then we're going down one into Elemental Exposure, which is a lucky hit that can cause enemies to become vulnerable, primarily to put three points into Endless Tempest so our hurricane lasts longer. This is because hurricane procs a ton of additional effects. Then three into Neurotoxin, poison enemies are slowed by 24%. We're putting three into this to be able to much more easily kite enemies. This helps a lot with higher tier content. One into Toxic Claws, so critical strikes with werewolf skills now apply a poison to enemies. We don't care about the damage of this, we just care that enemies are poisoned. Three into End Venom, you and your companions deal increased critical strike damage. We also have three of this on our necklace. Then three into defiance, increased damage to elites, three into circle of life. So anytime we use tornadoes, this will heal us. And because we have so much attack speed and spear generation in this build, we get a lot of healing from this. Then one into defensive posture, one into nature's resolve. So we can get three into unrestrained, which reduces the duration of CC on us by 9%. This is tripled when you have fortify over 50% of your base life, which will be most of the time. So most of the time, this will be a 27% reduction in CC. This is primarily because the unstoppable from Grizzly Rage was so heavily nerfed. And then next up, we have our Spirit Boons, Advantageous Beasts to reduce CC on us by another 15%. Then we have Scythe Talons for increased critical strike chance, Swooping Attacks for increased attack speed, Calamity to extend the duration of Grizzly Rage, and then Combo for the Storm, which is another lucky hit. Nature's Codes have up to a 10% chance to reduce the cooldown of your ultimate by two seconds. And then next up, we have our Paragon Boards. Now, I'm primarily going to be going over our board and glyph selection. I'll have a build planner linked in the description if you want to follow along with every single point. On our starting board, we're taking the werewolf glyph, increased damage while on werewolf, and damage reduction while on werewolf. Then we're going up taking the ancestral guidance board. After spending 75 spirit, you deal 30% increased damage for 5 seconds. You also want to be taking the reclamation rare node and two magic nodes here as well. This will give you 4 spirits on every single kill, which is a lot of our spirit generation. Then we're going up and taking the spirit glyph. This gives you increased increase critical strike damage and critical strikes increase the damage an enemy takes from you by 2% up to 12% and this is multiplicative so this glyph actually gives you some pretty massive damage increases. Then we're going up and taking the thunderstruck board. Storm skills deal increased critical strike damage against vulnerable or immobilized enemies. Then we're taking the earth and sky glyph. This will give us some storm skill damage, some damage reduction from vulnerable enemies which is actually really important and nature magic skills deal 10% increased damage to crowd controlled or vulnerable enemies. But one of the 
of the main reasons you take glyphs like this is so you can put points into the dexterity or intelligence nodes, which will give you 17 of those stats per one point. This is primarily so you can get the secondary effect of rare nodes throughout your board. Then we're going over to the right. We're taking the inner beast board, but we're not taking the legendary node itself. And one of the big reasons we're also taking this board is for the increased attack speed, rare, and magic nodes. Just this small section will give you some pretty massive increases to our attack speed. Then we're taking the exploit glyph. We primarily want the secondary effect, which when you damage an enemy, they become vulnerable for three seconds. So the first time we deal damage to any enemy, they're instantly vulnerable. This will massively increase our burst damage. Then we're going to down and going back to the right and we're taking the lust for carnage board now at the level i'm at i'm not currently taking this legendary node if you're a lower level you're definitely going to want this but with how much cooldown i have and with how long i'm able to stay in grizzly rage i don't really need lust for carnage i may change this up in the future and if you don't have as much cooldown as me or if you're not super high level and you don't have all your paragon points you may still want to take this but another big reason we're taking this board is for more attack speed. This will also give you some pretty big increases to attack speed. Now because of the order I did my paragon boards, I can't get the secondary effect of this rare node. This may be something I change in the future so I can get an additional 2.5% attack speed, but we'll just have to see if that's more optimal. Then the glyph we're taking is undaunted, which will give you massive damage increase while fortified and damage reduction while fortified, almost a 107% damage increase, which is pretty massive. Then we're going down taking the height and malice node. When there are three or more poison enemies near you, you deal 45% increased damage, and this is multiplicative, so this is one of the best legendary nodes in the game. And then next up, we have our uniques and our legendary aspects. As we went over, Tempest Roar is required for this build, and our most important aspect is on our necklace. Grizzly Rage now shapeshifts you into a dire werewolf, gives you movement speed instead of damage reduction, but the primary reason we want this is this gives you up to a 75% spirit cost reduction while in Grizzly Rage. This will also heal you every time you kill something so it's a pretty big increase to our healing but the spirit cost reduction is what allows us to basically infinitely spam tornadoes while in grizzly rage then for all of our other offensive aspects you can put them on your rings your gloves or your weapons doesn't matter where they go but first up we have skills deal up to 20 percent increased damage based on your available primary resource now when in grizzly rage because of how cheap our tornado is and with how much spirit regeneration we have this will be giving us a pretty big damage increase i'm still testing to see if any other aspects will be better than this, but this is the aspect we took because we're not using Earthern Might. Then the duration of Grizzly Rage increased by 5 seconds, and Critical Strikes while in Grizzly Rage increase our Critical Strike damage by 10%. This can stack up to around 1000% increased Critical Strike damage just from this one aspect. Then on our gloves, tornadoes seek up to three targets. So this gives tornadoes some amounts of tracking. Then on our weapon, critical strikes with core skills increase your attack speed by up to 25% for five seconds. This will be proc'd basically 100% of the time. And then finally, your core skills deal up to 40% increased damage based on your fortify. So another massive multiplicative damage increase. Now, as this is a max level build and I'm gonna generally be doing harder content, I am not using Mad Wolf's Glee anymore. That is still a pretty good, a unique chess piece you can use with this build, but if you're doing much harder content, you want a legendary chest piece with the damage reduction while in a werewolf. Then on our legs, you want disobedience, percentage, armor stacking, still the best defensive aspect in the game. Then on our boots, I currently have WoW Hurricane is active, gain plus two ranks to your shape shifting skills. There are some other utility aspects you can put on this, but that's generally just personal preference. Then next up, we have our gems, our gear stats, and our hearts. You're going to want increased critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies on your weapons, damage reduction while four on your gear and then for our hearts we're starting off with the barber which is one of the strongest hearts in the game probably is the strongest heart in the game when you critically strike an enemy it starts building up all damage you deal to that enemy for a certain duration after the crit mine's 3.9 seconds after the duration or if the enemy would die they blow up doing all of that built up damage in an aoe and that built up damage is always a crit and that built up damage is also multiplied by up to 15 percent for every second it's active so let's say you have a barber heart that the effect lasts for four seconds and yours does 14 percent increased damage per second like mine does and then let's say the enemy you're attacking lasts the full four seconds that would multiply all damage you've dealt to that enemy by 56 percent and then also make it a guaranteed crit and also make
make it an AoE. So in AoE situations, or also in single target situations, this heart just does some ridiculous damage. Then we're using the heart though when we're in our ultimate, we pull up to 50 distant enemies to us. And this pulls enemies off screen, but mixed with the barber, this pulls all the enemies together. You deal a bunch of damage to them. It blows up all that damage in an AoE from the barber, just insta-killing full groups of enemies, basically no matter what difficulty you're on. Then the final heart, up to 20% of the damage you take is suppressed. When we use a defensive, it blows up all that suppressed damage. We don't care about the damage on this because it's pretty low, but this is basically just 20% damage reduction at all times. And then for stats, on our chest piece, we just want all damage reduction, total armor, max life, damage reduction from distant or from close, damage reduction while fortified, or damage reduction from poison enemies. Then on our legs, the same thing, damage reduction from distant, from fortified, from close, or from poisoned. But one of the main roles you want is damage reduction while injured, because this is the damage reduction role that was not nerfed. So as you can see here, I have 42% damage reduction while injured. So once you get 35% or less, you take a massively reduced damage, and this also helps you survive while CC'd. Then on our boots, spirit cost reduction, dodge chance from distant, or just dodge chance, increased movement speed, and then another damage reduction while injured roll. So I have over 80% damage reduction while below 35% health, and with this being a build that heals a lot, your health is going to fluctuate quite a bit, so this is just massive damage reduction while low health, which helps you survive massively. Then on our gloves, ranks of tornado, lucky hit chance, attack speed, critical strike chance. Now even though lucky hits don't correctly work with the barber, we still want lucky hit chance so we can proc the lucky hit effects we do have more frequently. Then on our weapon, vulnerable damage, damage is slowed, willpower, core skill damage. The damage is slowed would probably be better going to something like critical strike damage. Then on our offhand, I have cooldown, lucky hit chance, damage reduction while fortified, and spirit cost reduction. This is a pretty good rolls. We don't have critical strike chance on it, but I think the damage reduction is probably going to be better. Then on our necklace, ranks 2 and venom going to be really good. Spirit cost reduction, damage reduction from poison enemies, and movement speed. This is going to be pretty good and you can change the damage reduction from poison to damage reduction while fortified. Then on our rings, critical strike chance, lucky hit chance, max life, and either critical strike damage or vulnerable damage. But this is the entirety of the build and this is easily one of the strongest builds in season one. This is level 100, all renowned completed, and with going into all the correct defensives, you should easily be able to defeat Lilith and do tier 100 nightmare dungeons. But that's pretty much all I want to go over, so thanks for watching. Must wait a moment. 